This is Active Recall. This is another Nine Connections video. So the three sources that I'm going to talk about are Jessica Abel. She appeared on the Copy Blogger podcast and then The Forever War, which is a novel I started reading and Made to Stick, which is a book I I've read, but I'm rereading it or actually like re-listening to the audiobook. Jessica Abel talks about in that episode, actually, no, it, I listened to that episode and then I went back to, I think, the first episode of her own podcast, which is out on, out on the wire. And there's this topic of paying attention to your attention. And this is when you're learning something and be, you're trying to become a, trying to write new stories. It's important to pay attention to your attention, meaning create things that amuse yourself. Like what? get your attention and then trying to make something that would get your attention if you were I guess a third party in a way and this ties into or is pretty related to Ira Glass and his talk about taste and where she does play that clip of Ira Glass talking about taste and you have this point when you start making something you're compelled to make something because you like other things in a lot of cases so at that point when you start making it there are things you like and you can't make things of that quality so you just have to make enough things and until you can close that gap and you'll get closer and closer to it to where you can make things that you legitimately like yourself but you're not gonna get there you, you can't close that gap without making things so he just says you've got to make a lot of things and then this idea of oh this is kind of two ideas that I mashed in here don't get mad get tape and be super curious so in that episode, she talks with Stephanie Fu, and these are lines that she says. So don't get mad, get taped. So anytime you get frustrated by something, you can always kind of dive into your interests. Um, and instead of getting mad, you don't have a story, go, go work on the story. And then number two, I guess this is like number five, four, be super curious when she was before she was a part of This American Life, she made her own. She knew she had to make her own stories, get that volume of stories. So she was just very curious about different things. And she says, even though it might not be true, she kind of just assumed every, there was a story behind everything, walking around like, what's the story behind this person? What's the story behind this person? And it, that reminds me of something John Stewart says in, I think it's John Stewart, in Sick in the Head, which is an interview book with by Judd Apatow he just has a bunch of interviews he's done through the past few decades with different comedians and in that John Stewart talks about not being able to turn it off sometimes where he would go around in the world and go go about his life looking for bits for his stand up acts and he would just he wouldn't be able to turn it off and then he says it was important to learn how to turn that off because you you can't always be in your head like that which also reminds me I'll just keep trying to connect things to the story grid podcast with uh, Sean Coyne and Tim Grawl. And they talk about just, you have to be able to turn it off. Um, they, they have a podcast episode about if you need to be depressed to be a good writer. And it's, it's based around like a Kurt Vonnegut, Vonnegut quote. And there's an argument there about like, if basically Tim Grawl, I think the conclusion there is like, if it, requires be becoming depressed to write a certain type of thing uh i don't want really want to make that sacrifice which is kind of this thing i buy into too like i don't really want to make that sacrifice to make all right i definitely like would not call what i'm making like art in the same way so i, I would rather make these things right now which is probably like some excuse uh you know that's the resistance talking and um probably just not courageous enough to make anyway number two the forever war which is this novel that i just i just started i think it's from 70s i'll, I'll look up the author one sec by joe haldeman and it's from 1974 military science fiction novel it is about soldiers fighting an interstellar war it's very good so far. I think I'm only like 30 pages in, but uh, yeah, I, I'm really enjoying it. I'm surprised. I, I don't know. Not that I'm like a big, 
I do enjoy science fiction, but it's not like I'm reading 20 science fi- fiction books a year. It's probably like one or two a year. And I hadn't heard about this book until the past few months, and I think it's regarded as a classic. It won the Hugo in the 70s, so yeah, it, it, it's very good so far. Oh, anyway, yeah, so these are the things it reminds me of. I forgot to separate these out into the different slides, but I mentioned the story grid, which is a podcast, but it's also a book about writing fiction novels. And reading the Forever War and reading the Story Grid at the same time, it just makes me think of like the scene work. And that's a big thing in Story Grid is you write scenes and you move them from. You you just try to change the mood. So the cool. Yeah, this book is written in each chapter seems to be about. So each chapter is a scene, basically. And it's it's been three or four pages each. And now I'm seeing how the scenes get pulled from positive to negative or positive to double positive. And one of the exercises in the story grid is to story grid another book. So I'm going to, I'm thinking of trying to do this with the forever war and on the story grid podcast. They, I think a few episodes are about Tim Grawl, the writer that works with Sean Coyne on that podcast. Just, he goes through story gridding the, uh, the first Harry Potter book. So yeah, I'll, I'll probably try it with the forever war and see how that turns out. Number two, Red Mars. So this kind of ties into the Jessica Abel mentions it. She wrote a comic about roller derbies on Mars. I haven't I haven't read that comic, but or the graphic novel. But she mentions Red Mars as one of the novels that she used as inspiration and part of her research. And it it's a science fiction novel I happen to have read. I didn't read the whole it's a whole trilogy, but Red Mars was very interesting. It reminds me of just kind of the opposite ends of things where the Forever War goes over some technology but doesn't go in depth in it. And Red Mars goes very in depth. If you think like the Martian has all this engineering stuff in it, Red Mars is just another level of like describing different things and explaining how a space elevator would have been built from like mining an asteroid and things like that. And then. Third, this reminds me of Halo, the Forever War. So within, as far as I've read, as mentioned, I didn't get that far, but there's a scene where they're getting equipment and just um, the armorer talks about how to use the different equipment. And it very much reminded me of the first time I played Halo and it's just, it, it walks you through how you even like look around and then what the different buttons do. And in this book, it talks about this suit that lets you carry i think like up to one ton and how much pressure you should apply apply and that you can't run fast you you can't try to sprint in the suit it won't support that and then third source is made to stick i made an, a full video about this with different ideas but it's going to be the topic of the podcast this week so i just wanted to uh go through it even more so There's this idea of fiction and nonfiction, so that kind of ties into the story grid, but it's just, even in nonfiction, the most effective non... So fiction, the best works of fiction are these stories that... I I guess it's kind of like the best works of fiction have these lessons that apply in regular life. Um, And then the best nonfiction is trying to tell us like teach a concept or something like that. I don't know if it's always teaching, but the best nonfiction is the best that way because there are, there's a story to it. So made to stick is about storytelling, like the power of stories. And then again, this reminds me of the story grid. The podcast lately has also it. Most of the episodes are about writing fiction. Tim Grawl was writing a novel, but now he's writing a nonfiction book about creativity. And there's been a, f- a lot of episodes uh, about nonfiction. At this point, I think like seven of probably like seven episodes of nonfiction and each are 45 to an hour, 45 minutes to an hour each. So it's cool to hear how even in nonfiction, you use these uh, fiction conventions and even that idea of like scenes and This is how you put a story together to put your message together to make it sticky. And then 
next concept authority versus anti-authority in made to stick they talk about um say like michael jordan promoting mcdonald's we he, he's not an authority on the best foods to eat he's definitely like an authority in another field but we want to be like him and it's not anti-authority as in oh i hate i hate authority figures blah blah, blah. i'm a rebel not not like that it's just not being an authority and then another example is trying to get kids to stop smoking is an anti-authority there is like a woman appearing in commercials where she has throat cancer and it's just one of these things like you trust and believe you can trust and find authority in someone because they are familiar with your journey they've been in your position so they're not authority on the topic but they're an authority on your position and this is kind of like the beginner's mindset or the power of the beginner's mind where a lot of times it's easier to learn very early topics from someone who was recently a beginner versus someone who has 20 years experience in it because they are this is this is also a topic in made to stick is this game where someone taps a song all they do is like tap the melody of a song and it can be baffling for them that people can't guess what song it is because it's so clear to them because they have um they have that knowledge so in the same way you can find sometimes you can learn more from someone who is recently a beginner versus someone with 20 years of experience thanks for listening to this and if you want to hear more of uh what i'm learning then hit subscribe thanks a lot